is we ask that if you have a cell phone or cell phone or some device that makes noise, if you will turn that off, uh, put it on vibrate or stun or whatever you do to make sure that it's silent during the, the course of the discussion. Uh, I want to thank uh, the Coleman Times for co-sponsoring these events with us and I'd like to introduce to you Ben Bullard for the Coleman Times. Our format for tonight, uh, each candidate will be asked the, the same question given approximately two minutes to respond to the question. We will not have an opening statement, however, we will have closing statements. And we will start with uh, the, 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 the alphabet, the first speaker, and then we will work through the speakers. And then in closing, um, we'll do things just a little bit differently. Uh, we'll let the speakers then uh, do their closing. Um, so we will, uh, the, the chamber will start with the first question. All three will answer that question. And then the last person will then, uh, following that answer, will be then asked the first question for the next round. So with that in mind, uh, before we start, we'd like to uh, have the invocation and the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Let's pray. Lord, we thank you for the opportunity we have to come together as a community. Lord, we thank you for the opportunity we have, Lord, um, in this country of ours to have the freedom to vote. Um, for those, Lord, we thank you for those that um, take the uh, initiative and the charge, Lord, to run for elected office, Lord. We ask you to bless all three of these candidates. Lord, we pray that everything we say and do would bring honor and glory to your name. We pray all these things in your wonderful name. Amen. Amen. If you'll please stand for the pledge. Attention. Salute. Pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Our first question will go to Mayor Fitz. Each of you will have about two minutes, and if, as you make your comments, uh, I would encourage you to look at the crowd rather than to look at us, although I know I'm pretty. <laughs> These are the people that are going up to uh, elect you. And I would also remind you that we have a timekeeper in the back that will uh, hold up some signs to let you know when you have a minute, 30 seconds, and then she has some kind of very obnoxious sound. It will sound, in this case, it's a bell, uh, when you've uh, had your two minutes, and if you will, uh, try to remind you. Comments up very, very quickly at that too. And the first question is, why do you want to be the mayor of the town of Cobb? Because the continent is a good place to live. It's a good time. And we want to bring the people together. Young, old, white, color, no matter what race it is. We want to bring them all together and one work in unity and work together for the better of this community grow this community for our senior citizens and our young people. You know, get, get some uh, reparation for them and get some uh, stoves and different stuff like that for our senior citizens so they won't have to travel so far, you know, and stuff. It'd be nice that we could have a uh, famine uh, stove down here so our uh, senior won't have to drive all the way to Kuala. Uh, all the way to Hampton so that they can, uh, you know, have a short trip so they won't tire them out. You know, we need some uh, restoration for our children, you know, like a skating ring, bowling at it. We need to do something so they can get them, uh, you know, out of the street because we don't often that, you know, the wood got a lot to offer for them. So my thing is running for mayor to bring the people together at one and together we stand divided we part, and we can do anything if we stand together. And that's what I'm running for, to be the next mayor, continue to be the mayor, continue to be the leadership that this community and the whole Cullen County want, because we, we, we've seen progress, and we're doing a wonderful job around the Cullen, so if I'm elected, I'm looking for to continue the leadership with our people. Thank you. The 
this we're all here one of the gods in this town. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm the elected mayor of this town. First, we've got to work on the unity as a whole for the community. Back in the 50s and 60s, it was a strong town family. We got to get that back like it was. Second of all, we got to work with these kids. It's not for the kids to do. I quite their time, but they won't get in trouble. Like on and off and on. Then we got to make sure the parents work together with them kids with us and we make this thing happen. Third, citizens of this county, the oldest of the citizens of this town, they have been elected some opportunities they should get between Medicare and health care. We got to make sure that it happens. My leadership, I will not take the word no. Anything they say, they didn't get. I will go up and make sure it's going to happen. And third, we got to, like you said, we got to get some kind of thing to make revenue for the town of Collin. Start with a general dollar, bread, or whatever. And we got to get that done. Because if you don't, this town is going to purge away. We got to get that revenue up some kind of way. The council members, we got to work together. And the mayor got to hit the ground hard and run. He can't just stay in Covenant County to get stuff done. He got to go another county. He got to go to Salem, Alabama. He got to go to Montgomery. He got to go to he got to go to Livestone County, Hospital, Florence. You got to get different peoples to come with you together and bring your town as a whole together. You just can't sit back and think you're going to do it by yourself. That's why you got council members for it. You got to put them out there on the ground running, give them an area to cover, and then be set. And then bring it back to the table. You work on it with your plan and have a commitment. You got to have a commitment. Make sure it gets done for your group. Thank you. Good evening, everyone. The reason why I would like to run for mayor of the town of Colony is because I've noticed that the recent census report has been declined um, dramatically over the years. Uh, we've really fallen in numbers in the town of Colony. That is very disturbing to our community. It's disturbing to me as a candidate for mayor. The, the, the spin-off to that is our youth really needs more monitoring in our community. We need to focus a lot more on our youth in our community, also our mid-age. We need to have more social activities for them, different things that they can go out and enjoy, uh, you know, the age groups around their ages, and things geared towards uh, our mid-age in the community around 30 and 40 years of age. For our elderly uh, in our community, the more older generation, we need to look at them for more assistance. Um, different things that I've noticed that a lot of the elderly in the community uh, is dealing with in the, in the winter time, and I'm sorry, the summertime, they struggle with heat. So we really need to focus on how we can get better assistance to them and a better quality of life as a whole to everyone. And I also like to run for mayor of Town and Colony because Town and Colony is a great town, and I love this town, and I would like to see it grow. We have fallen behind for years, and it's, it's time for our community to move forward. Thank you. Can't pay for 
we got to stick with our means and that everything will be all right. My response to that question is, I feel that if we're as a town right now and we're still functioning, I feel that we are financially sound. It's to a point where you're going to have to have the right leadership to tweak it to a point where we're in the green and we're in the positive. Uh, I, I really do feel that there's things that's in the town that we can enhance to make it better, better quality of life. Uh, we can do different things financially by creating a budget, something that we're going by, uh, things far as uh, ways how we can increase our revenue in in inside the town of Colony. Um, I feel as if if we set aside a committee for the finance, someone that specializes in the finance, anyone can grow on a on a financial scale to wherever they want to be. You just have to sit down, have a plan, have a strategy, and move forward from that point. Thank you. Uh, no, we're not uh, finance stable, you know, like we should be. We have some debt, and the mayor can't do no more than the council let him. We've got to have a working council to work with the mayor. If we get the council to come together and work with the mayor, then we can iron out our problem. We got some debt and, uh, from the bank and stuff, and we got to find out a way how to, to consolidate our loan. Once we sat down and consolidated all our loans, put them together, then we can start moving, we can start seeing revenue coming in. And another thing, we got uh, community, we, we, we have to set up an ordinance for a business license and permit for people coming in and out of this town working and stuff so that we can get some revenue coming in. Our uh, sensor, they keep, every year they keep going down, down, down. So our revenue from the county is going down. So we got to find out a way how to get that revenue back up and get stuff down here so it can attract our young people, get their attention so they can stay in the college not leave the cotton because the cotton is a good place to live and we got a lot of room. So we looking for all that to grow this uh, community and start over as new and you know I know we're gonna have some debt but when I took mail I come in and I said that I didn't come in to borrow no money. You cannot borrow your way out of debt. You're gonna have to pay it out. So that's why I still stand that we're not going to borrow our way out. We're not going to borrow any money. We're going to pay it out, and we're going to be looking good. Our third question, we'll start with Mr. Ward, and then Mayor Fitz, and Mr. Lee. What, in your opinion, are the priorities and responsibilities of the town's mayor? First of all, that's a good question. Um, the responsibilities can range from anything from A to Z. It's really what you make out of it, basically. Uh, number one should be the citizens of the town of Colony. That's number one. They have to spin off of your population, of your the finances. That has uh, deals with development. It has a long range of things that it deals with. So to answer your question, I feel that the citizens would be number one. And from that point, it's a spin off to a lot of different other things. But if you stay focused on your citizens and their uh, quality of life, their concerns, and give them a good leadership, I feel that you can do anything that you put your mind to it, anyone. Number one, council people working with the council. Mayor can do nothing without a good working relationship with the council. Then once we get the relationship with the county, then we can go out and have something proud and be our senior citizen, and the third will be our young people, you know. But the main goal is our county people, 
they're going to have to set the standard for the mail. You know, we can't show the, the, uh, uh, our resident that we ain't confused and we don't argue all the time. If we, how are we going to bring somebody else together? So, my first problem is to count. We're going to have to sit down and iron out different cuts out. I know we got a uh, book from the lead, and the lead said, well, sometimes the mayor, you know, a uh, relationship, you know, take the, take the council people out to lunch or something else, you know, and I'm willing and ready to do that so that we can have a better relationship and that we can, uh, when we start working together and everybody in this community see us working together. And, you know, I know uh, Kerman with all the mayor associations, we have a good relationship working together in human harmony and unity. And uh, if we can do the council the same way, then the cotton will be on, on the right road. We've got to work with these kids. That's broad. Then the seniors. Then we got to work on get some order for these tenants to get grown to stay. They get grown and bring the parents home, they leave the colony. That gotta be, we gotta stop that, some kind of way or another. We gotta work to get somewhere, something to build where these people can stay in our community. They can put that tax money back in this town. But if we don't do that, it's gonna, they're gonna leave and the, the now the people in the colony will go down less than us now. We gotta keep them up here up. And then we can relax a little bit but we can take care of the kids, the seniors, and the middle of dust somewhere to live in our town. So it needs reviving, you know, and stuff. And I think that they revive it and get it, you know, uh, stable, you know, for everybody and all the uh, cities and times and stuff. And I know uh, that, you know, the, the city of Hampton and Coleman, you know, they got alcohol, you know, and the Good Hope got it on their agenda, you know, and stuff. But one, if, if we can get everybody on a level, because we don't have the, the, uh, the normal people that Hamper and Cubman have, but if we can get the uh, tax on, on a level base, and then I think we uh, we benefit good on that. But it needs to be uh, revised. Dealing with the revising of the sales tax, um, with the town of Collins situation, I think that it would help due to the fact that we really struggle at this point in time with the, the revenue being down in town of Colony. So in the town of Colony situation, it would help. Um, but it's also, you've got to look at a lot of different options on uh, where it stands as far as the good and the bad. Um, but overall, I believe it will help the town of Colony. Thank you. Sales tax would definitely help the town of Cotton because other towns, the might be the biggest town in Cotton, give about six eight cents a person, six eight dollars a person. And we're the lowest on that list to get money. And when we get the money, sales tax, you better know how to use it, how to operate with it. So eleven thousand dollars will be coming off us. That's about six five thousand dollars. So when you get this money, you got to know how to. Move. Operate the money, budget the money, and then you'll be all right. Until then, you got to get, get it controlled. You can't buy nothing you don't need. But the sales tax is valuable to the town. It will help. Mr. Layton, if you'll stay up, I'll ask the next question of you, and then be followed by Mr. Ward, and then Mayor Fitz. 
if you're elected, what specific skills or strengths do you possess which you believe will benefit the community? Skills. I've been in the military 21 years. I've been in planning classes. How to lead leadership classes. I've been a leader, leader position since 1981. And I have been signed and over, signed for over three million dollars equipment at one time. And I have no less than 12 members in my section at one time. And skills, I have been a lot of go to school, how to set up a budget. These are skills that you need, but you've got to have somebody in place also to help you with, with that. You can't do it by yourself. With somebody having me, we can do wonderful things. The skills I got. But I, you know, I've been all over the world. Out there, out there every nationality, it is. So I can work with anybody. That everybody said, you, got, you can't sit back in that rocking chair and read a paper. I go to work every day. You gotta be out there running and getting what you need for your time. All you do it legal and do it safe and honest, it's gonna be all right. And I can do that. One of the things that I possess uh, to answer your question would be public service. Uh, I've dealt with that ever since I was five years old, was working with the public. No matter if it was just growing up, just in and around the community with the family, socializing, talking, I've always found the need to help in others. Uh, some of the things that I have done over the past years is I've served on uh, two, different, two numerous boards in Coleman County as board of directors. Um, and it allowed me to meet different peoples in the state of Alabama that the majority of the peoples in Coleman County would have the opportunity to. Um, it has allowed me to see different avenues and use different resources to tap in things to help out individuals, you know, deal with uh, different needs that they may have uh, to allow to go through. Uh, just recently, just recently, just recently, I helped out a uh, person. She did not have no type of health insurance. She didn't have any type of health insurance. And I uh, contacted North Carolina, North Alabama, and talked with some of them that was over the LA program uh, of that way. And she didn't have no other resources nowhere. She didn't have any type of help. Uh, and it allowed them to find a nursing home and actually pay for it to give her a better quality of life. And uh, that was one of the things that just turned her life around and knowing that someone cared about her. Uh, there's a lot of different things that I feel that I can help out the town colony with that will be unique and special and different. And uh, we really need to move this community forward, not just say it, but actually do it. Thank you. and ability to lead, I am a leader. And I also am a father. I won't tell uh, no employee to do nothing that the mayor wouldn't do it. I spent the last 40 years down in the Associated Grocery. It started off as an uh, order of selection, went up to the farm level, went up to the chef leadman, and went up to the supervisor. Right now, my record speaks for itself. You go back down there, they want me to come back to work now. I am a team player, you know. But I also am a leader, and also, they working together with, don't care who he is, young or old. If there's a young person out there, get out there and work. He can't do no more work than I can. I'll be wet with him. You know, so, you know, my thing is for the college is bring us together and we start to work together in union and stop all this him. Yep, yep, yeah. And you know, that grow up as wrong people 
And let's leave this time off because this time if we need us, our children, our grandchildren, they are watching us. So let's be leaders and let's be doers of the word, not only talking. We just sit back talking. So let us do it, you know, and my way speak for myself. Okay, the word for this question is Mr. Ward, Mr. Fitz, and then Mr. Lee. A petition has been circulating to hold a referendum for legal alcohol sales in Coleman County. Will legal sales in Colony as part of Coleman County be beneficial or not? Mr. Revenue side of that, as we can tell, the city of Colvin has definitely uh, got a big advantage from alcohol sales there in the city of Hansel as as well. Uh, but if it was up to me, I'll let the you know if it was up to the citizens of the town of Colony uh, instead of the petition county wide, I would love to see the people's voice, their opinion on that. Um, that to me would be the more uh, better input that the field of the community would like to see. Um, uh, an advantage on financially as far as the revenue side that would benefit the town of Collin just like it has for the city of Colvin and the city of Hansville. So uh, I feel that we'll actually get a good uh, start off with it on the revenue side. Thank you. On the revenue side, uh, it won't benefit us. Uh, it go straight to, uh, to Cub. We get a little uh, revenue from the state, but we don't get nothing from our club. So the alcohol uh, revenue uh, from club won't help the, uh, the town of Cotton. Uh, it helped just, just the city. In some sort of way, they got it. They got it worked out some sort of way that the rest of the, uh, the town or uh, the city, they don't benefit from the uh, alcohol. Uh, on uh, tap. So that mainly is for the citizens. And, you know, uh, the county won't benefit on that. You know, and you have to have a certain number of people, you know, and stuff, to even uh, to fit that category on, on that, you know, and stuff. So uh, we just left out on that revenue. <coughs> Didn't you say there's a petition around with the county to go with? Yeah, there's a, there's a petition circulating that would launch a referendum if the petition is successful that the county residents would be able to vote in to it, make the county stay dry or to make the county go wet. That's what I thought you said. That'd be a good, good thing to do because I don't drink, but people do drink. Oh, that's nothing, nothing against it. Because the tax, we have the school, we have our library over here. So they all over have the tax all over county county. We have the benefit that very good because we have more money we be coming into our town. And plus, like I said, the kids can get more better books. And like how the gym haven't been built, it could be built quicker properly with that tax money. And yeah, it would definitely uh, be a benefit to the town and county. Because when we get in, that would be a great help. I just like to come up here. To, to a dollar. So, we had all that tax up, get some money. Yes, that would be a very good idea. And you got to have that tax to make anything work in the economy. You got to. You look over to these other states, got all this I got all tax stuff. What they got? Cities. They ain't got no tax, they got cities, all tax money. Next rotation of questions will be Mr. Pitts, Mr. Lee, and Mr. Ward. The question is, do you have an agenda of specific things that you hope to accomplish if you were elected mayor, and what are three things on that agenda? Uh, Working together. Number 
number one. Number two, revenue for the town cop is number two. Number three is the senior citizen. I would like to see the senior citizen.